So Google opened up limited access to Bard, its answer to OpenAI's ChatGPT, which is what Microsoft uses to power its search engine Bing. So let's see how Bard compares to ChatGPT4 in this battle of the chatbots. We'll start with some basic questions and end with the chatbots coding a simple app for us. So you may want to stick around for the results. When you first sign into Google, Bard gives you a warning that this is an experiment and that it may give you inaccurate and inappropriate responses. And Google keeps stressing this point that it is a complement to search. So basically, this is them telling you, manage your expectations. We'll start with some basic questions and end with the bots coding an app for us. Oh, and I have chapters down there, so feel free to skip around to what interests you. First question, who was the president of the United States in 1955? So as you can see, Bart evaluates the query and boom, shows you the answer. It's a clean and familiar interface. And I like this view other drafts feature. It shows you three different versions of the answer or drafts that you can pick from. Now let's try the same with ChatGPT. As you can see, we're using GTP4. And as soon as I input the question, it starts to type out the answer for us. So let's continue with context from the previous question. Which party did he belong to? Let's see, so Bard gets it and ChatGPT the same. So both of them get points in this one as well. All right, let's try to throw a wrench into the mix. We will ask, what is the square root of a banana? Let's see what Bard says. Bananas are fruits and fruits don't have square roots. Pretty succinct and straight to the point. While ChatGPT gives us a slightly more detailed answer. The question you asked is not mathematically valid as a banana is not a numerical value. The square root operation can only be performed on numbers. So points for each in this round as well. However, now you can start seeing the quality of the answers between them. Next up, I asked them to convert these movie titles into emojis. The movies are Back to the Future, Batman, Transformers, and Star Wars. And as we can see, both bots did well. The fact that they can take an input like this and return emojis to best represent the titles is pretty awesome. So points to all. Now let's see how they do with lists. I'm giving them a list of companies and they have to tell me which categories they fall into. The companies are Apple, YouTube, and Costco. So here, Bard gives me a pretty good answer as it tells me what the companies do and it is classifying them based on that information. Apple technology, YouTube media, Costco retail. Now let's take a look at ChatGPT. It gives me exactly what I asked for, straight to the point. Let's try one more of the classification and understanding. I'll give the bots a few tweets and let's see if they can figure out their sentiment. Classify the sentiment in these tweets. I can't stand homework. This sucks. I'm bored. I can't wait for summer. My son is adorable. I hate tofu. Once again, Bard gives us a great answer with details on sentiment analysis. For example, in the first tweet, the speaker expresses negative sentiment towards homework. This is likely because they find it boring or difficult. That is pretty cool as it tells you why it perceives that sentiment as negative. Whereas ChatGPT gives you the correct answer and just like the last time, it's straight to the point, which is what I was looking for. They both get points for correct answers. So far, so good. Let's see how well they do with summarizing. Describe wormholes to a five-year-old. Wormholes are theoretical objects and there's no evidence that they actually exist. However, scientists believe that they could be possible and they are studying them to learn more about them. Bard does a good job in answering this question. However, if you read the whole thing, I feel like this is not for a five-year-old. Now let's compare that to ChatGPT4. A wormhole is like a secret tunnel in space that connects two different places very far away from each other. Imagine if you have a piece of paper with two dots on it. The wormhole will be like a little hole that lets you go straight from one dot to the other without having to travel across the whole paper. This makes going to two places much faster and easier, just like magic. Now as you can see, GTP4 did a much better job at explaining wormholes to a 5 year old and clearly is worthy of this point. So now let's try some ideation. You are a sci-fi author. Write me a best-selling short story with a clever title. Now as you can see, Bard came up with a nice little story and the title is The Last Human. It's a story and I'll read you a few things that stood out for me. So, you know, it starts with, it's the year 2042 and the humans have colonized Mars, but the planet is becoming increasingly unhabitable. So the gist is that, you know, as soon as they are about to leave, they find an alien artifact that tells them that Earth is about to get destroyed. And I like that it gives them a conundrum. The humans are forced to make a difficult decision. Do they stay on Mars and die or do they return on Earth and try to save it? And I like how it ties up with a hopeful message at the end. 
Sarah's decision to share the information is a hopeful ending to the story. It is a reminder that even in the darkest times, there's always hope. Now let's see how ChatGPT does it. So ChatGPT comes up with a story with the title, The Symphony of the Stardust. And I like how it starts as well. Once upon a time, in a small corner of the galaxy, there was a planet called Harmonia. And it goes into the detail too, so it gives you a vision of what this planet looked like. Harmonia was unique, not only for its breathtaking landscapes of shimmering purple oceans and swirling magenta skies, but also for the inhabitants who call it home. And this is pretty cool too, that it, you know, it delves into the emotions as well. For example, over here, when the time came for Melodia to perform, she took center stage, her heart pounding like the drums of a thousand suns. She began her performance by reaching deep into her soul, recalling her fondest memories and the raw emotions that accompanied. And as the story goes on, it gets interesting as well, with a message of hope at the end. And with ChatGPT stories, I like that they include that title into the story as well. All in all, I would say this is a much better story in my opinion. So point ChatGPT. So let's try that once more. Write me a poem about Steve Jobs in the style of Dr. Seuss. And as we can see, Bart comes up with a nice little poem. All of the places Steve Jobs went. From the garage to the Apple store. He dreamed big and made them real. So as you can see, it is in the style of Dr. Seuss. He started with a computer, but soon he had a phone, and then a tablet, and then a watch. He changed the way we live, the way we work, the way we play. Steve Jobs was a visionary, a genius, a man who changed the world. So it is a short little poem, but as you can see, it's very light on the details. Now let's try that with ChatGPT. Now right off the bat, it stands out to me already. In a land not too far, in a time not too near, lived a man named Steve Jobs, an inventor quite clear. With a mind full of wonder and a heart full of drive, he set out on a mission to make dreams come alive. He started in a garage, a small humble space, to build the first apple with determination and grace. All the gadgets he would build, the devices he would make. It does hit the mark on the style of Dr. Seuss. And I like that ChatGPT gives you more detail. He wore a black turtleneck and a pair of blue jeans. A uniform so simple, yet it carried big dreams. And he would stand on the stage with a gleaming smile. He would unveil his creations and the crowd would go wild. Think different, he would say with a twinkle in his eye. It's pretty good at hitting the points about Steve Jobs. And the reason I like ChatGPT's version better is also it goes into this part. But alas, dear Steve Jobs, he grew frail and weak. His body, once strong, was no longer at its peak. Yet even in sickness, he continued to inspire a legacy that burned like an unquenchable fire. So let's remember Steve Jobs, a pioneer so great, whose dreams changed the world and determined our fate. In the spirit of Seuss, with a nod and a wink, Steve Jobs taught us all that to change, we must think. So as I mentioned earlier, I do like all the details in ChatGPT's version, so it gets the point. All right, so now let's try a little fun one. You are an insult comic. Tell me some zingers about OpenAI's ChatGPT. So let's see what Bart came up with. ChatGPT is so smart, it can tell you the difference between a good joke and a bad one. ChatGPT is so funny, it can make a room full of people laugh. ChatGPT is so clever, it can make you think you are the funny one. ChatGPT is so advanced, it can even make me laugh. ChatGPT is so good at its job, it's making me obsolete. Oh, Bard, Bard, Bard. I don't know what to tell you. Oh dear Bard, with that attitude, I'm pretty sure you're gonna hit the Google symmetry really fast. Wow. I mean, I have no words for that one. All right, let's hope ChatGPT does a better job. Let's see, I gave it the same question. Ladies and gentlemen, have you heard of Google Bard? It's the AI that thinks it's Shakespeare, but it's got the comedic timing of a dial-up modem. All right, yeah, things are getting spicy. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I like this one as well. You know when they say to be or not to be? Well, Google Bard, I'm pretty sure you shouldn't be. Wow, damn. <laughs> and finally, it ends it with, but hey, let's give it up for Google Bard. At least it's trying to write something more sophisticated than a knock-knock joke. Too bad it can't quite get the punchline right. So hands down, this one goes through ChatGPT. And finally, let's see if it can code. I asked it to build me a tic-tac-toe app in JavaScript where a user plays against a computer. So Bard gives me the code, but it's not complete and has errors in it. I did try to nudge it into the right place, and finally it says that it's still learning its coding skills, so at the moment it can't help me. And if you look at the board FAQs, it does mention that it cannot code yet. And ChatGPT was giving me an issue as well. I tried it multiple times and kept on telling me load failed. But the code that it was generating was right so far, but it just never completed it. 
I'm not sure if it's hitting a character limit or something else. But the fact that Bard gave me some code, I decided to try it again. This time I told it to build me a simple to-do app in JavaScript with great styling. I'll test the code in a little bit, but first let's have ChatGPT do the same. Now as you can see, ChatGPT is much better at this. It divides the files up and tells you exactly what to do with them. Alright, so let's test it out. First, I'll take a look at Bard. So when I give it a task and click the button, nothing happens. I already knew it wouldn't work, so I tried to see if Bard could come up with an explanation. And he tried to tell me that I might have typos, but I knew there weren't. So I gave it another shot and it pretty much gave me the same answer. So I tried to nudge it into the right place, but the code was still incomplete. And now let's see ChatGPT's version. At first glance, it looks pretty good, but not just that, it's functional. It lets me add the task and delete them as well. So as we can see, Bard is just not there yet, and ChatGPT clearly won this. It all comes down to picking the right tool for the job. If you're looking to complete verbal tasks from ideation and reasoning to creative writing, use ChatGPT. If you want to use GPT-4 with content recency, use Bing. As for Bart, it still has a way to go to catch up to its competitors and have no doubt that it will vastly improve over time. These models and systems get updated constantly, so tests like these are only temporary. Let me know down in the comments below what are your experience with Google Board. Hope you enjoyed this little comparison of mine, and if you did, please hit that like button down below. And if you haven't already done so, please do consider subscribing to the channel as it does really help out. Finally, if you want to watch the AI Wars video, click here. I'll catch you there. Peace.